I have in my hand a book entitled The Book of Not Knowing, Exploring the True Nature of Self, Mind, and Consciousness. And let me tell you something. It's a very, very thick book. So as I'm reading this thing, I'm thinking, boy, there's a lot to not know. And as I'm reading a book, and I've almost finished the book, I could honestly say I, I don't even really know what the heck the book is saying, except for the major premise that I really understand from this is that I have to, we have to get out of our knowing of who we think we are, of so many things that we believe that we've been told, and put them aside. Get out of your knowing of that so that you can really uncover what ultimately is the truth. When it comes to Christianity, every one of us has been told that the classic understanding is that, well, Jesus died for our sins. He rescued us from alienation from God because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. So the whole point and purpose of Jesus was to be a human sacrifice to atone for sins. This has led many people to see Christianity as simply a belief system. We must believe certain things about Jesus and who he was. If we do, then we're saved. And if we don't, then we're not saved, and we, quote-unquote, die in our sin and are therefore condemned. What do you think about that? Is that really the whole point and purpose of Jesus? Almost as if whatever he had to say didn't even matter. How can this be? How could it possibly be true and accurate that the three years that Jesus spent teaching and healing and his very presence with people, how can none of that be important and only his act on the cross of dying for our sins? So today I'd like to ask each of you to ask yourselves the question, what did Jesus teach? What really was his message? If we read the scripture and we read the gospels, what we hear over and over again that was most important to Jesus was this understanding of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus would say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is in your midst. Very often, once again, a false understanding of this came to be that the kingdom of heaven was a place we go to after we die. But it seems to me, as we're reading the scripture, that the kingdom of heaven was not something that we die into, but something that we awaken into. That the kingdom of heaven was a quality or a dimension of experience accessible to each one of us right now. It was a new state of consciousness. It was a new way of looking at the world. A transformed awareness that literally turns this world into a different place. Jesus uses the term of vine and branches. He was speaking to us of this oneness with the divine. I am the vine and you are the branches. This absolute connectedness with the divine and to be able to live your life every day in that awareness that the living God dwells inside of you. This awareness of the inner presence of the living God inside of us transforms us. It changes us. So the understanding is that the kingdom of heaven is not a place that we go to, but a place that we come from. The kingdom of heaven is an experience of our transformed being. You know, we often look at Jesus with 2020 vision. We, we know what he did. We know he died on a cross. We know he rose from the dead. He's the son of God. And we know all that. And, you know, going back to the idea that Christianity is believing in all those things, what about the people who met Jesus prior to all those things that what was it about Jesus that transformed their hearts? Think of James and John, the blind men on the road to Jericho, the centurion, Mary Magdalene, the Samaritan woman at the well. What about all these people? They encountered him before the cross, 
before the resurrection, and there was something about Jesus, there was something about his presence that made them say yes to Jesus. Something caused them to go deeper and higher into themselves, knowing that they could know who they were beyond the ordinary mental construct of themselves. Last week on Labor Day weekend, I was driving down to Washington to visit with my daughter. And as I was driving down, I pulled out a CD from Eckhart Tolle. And I literally listened to this CD seven times. I just wanted to listen to it over and over and over again. And Tolle talks about this sense of how typically human beings see themselves, this mind-made sense of self, which is an egoic sense of who we are. And that we see ourselves in terms of our personal history, the things that happened to us. How did people treat me? What am I holding on to? Conclusions that I draw about myself. And he said this line, a mind made sense of self and nothing more. And it just hit me after the seventh time I heard that of realizing, yeah, that's it. We're so much more than what has happened to us. We're so much more than the conclusions that we draw about ourselves. We're walking around having this sense of who we think we are, and yet it's such a limited understanding of who we are as a human being. I believe that this is what Jesus taught. Jesus was no country bumpkin. Jesus, if we can recall, read the scripture at the synagogue. The man knew how to read. He had an education. He had an experience of a lot of different spiritual teachings. And out of this, Jesus grew in his knowledge and his awareness that he was one with the very source of all of life. And he was saying to us, you too. It's not that Jesus had this special, unique knowledge that he was the only begotten son of God, him, not us. That's not the message of Jesus. Jesus was saying, you too can see yourself in a deeper dimension of who you are, but you've got to come and open up your heart Your heart has an intelligence beyond the mind. Your heart has a way of intuitive knowing that your mind cannot understand. Your mind thinks in terms of objects. Your mind thinks in terms of me versus the other person, Uh, compares ourselves with other people, remembers all the things that happened to us. That's not who we are. It's a limited dimension. So Jesus was saying to us, Go deep within yourself. This is what these people experienced when they encountered Jesus. And once again, this all occurred prior to the crucifixion and Jesus rising from the dead. So what we learn in those scriptures, and we even hear this in Paul's letter to the Philippians, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ. Wow, that's the message. I want to have the mind of Jesus Christ. I want to have the heart of Jesus Christ, which has nothing to do with him dying and rising from the dead. It was how Jesus saw life, himself, and reality. And when we can enter into that dimension, we live in the kingdom of heaven now, And we experience reality in a totally different way. In today's gospel, we hear Jesus talking about that we must hate our mother and father, and if we don't, we're not fit for the kingdom. Or if we're going to be on a journey to make sure that we have enough to bring us to the end, so that we can follow through all the way to the completion of the journey. Now, this is a Jewish... Jesus isn't saying to hate our mother and father. This is a Jewish way of saying... This is how important this is, that when we're talking about living in the kingdom of heaven, experiencing this new dimension of ourselves and of reality, of experiencing the indwelling presence of God inside of us, that this requires work on our parts. We must participate in this. 
Catholic Christianity is not some passive thing that we sit back and we try to like get something from Jesus and Jesus is going to wow us. If we look at the gospel passages, the people who heard about Jesus, the people who were going to Jesus because they wanted to get someone from him, they're not around anymore. The people who want to participate, the people who want to engage and do the inner work, the people who want to know and experience the indwelling presence of the God inside of them, those are the people that stick around. By the way, I'd like to say that you are those people, that you want more than anything to open up your heart and your mind to Jesus Christ, and more importantly, to be able to say, yes, I want to think the way Jesus thinks. I want to perceive the way Jesus perceives. And I want my heart to be aligned with Jesus Christ. Understand something. Your yearning for that is really God's yearning for you. When you open up to your own inner yearning, what you come to discover that ironically what's always been going on, it's really God who's always been yearning and pursuing you. Stay open to that. Keep pursuing that. Spend time in quiet prayer. And you will experience the power and the strength of the living God, which will totally change your experience of yourself and your life.